Hello, it's Grandma Karen. Now that you've done your homework and learned about some of the buttons and dials on your sewing machine, we are ready to learn about the presser feet and how to use your hands to sew. You'll practice sewing on paper in our next lesson. In this video, we will be looking at the Bernina 802 Sport. This is your accessory box. There are lots of small things in it. Today we will look at the presser feet. Be careful to always put things back in the box. They are easily lost and are expensive to replace. Your machine came with six different presser feet. There's one for putting in zippers, one for making buttonholes, and for other special sewing tasks. Today we will look at the all-purpose foot. It is also called the zigzag foot. Your guidebook just calls it the presser foot. This is a close-up of the all-purpose foot on the left and another foot on the right. Each presser foot has a number on it. The manual will tell you the name of each foot by its number or the feet that came with your machine. The left one that came with your machine has an engraved number at the top. The all-purpose foot is the 000 foot. If you buy, or buy a new foot for your machine or replace one that you've lost, you will notice that the numbers may have changed and they are written on the front of the foot. The arrows point to the foot number. If you need to replace a presser foot or want to buy another specialty foot, Tell the Bernina dealer that you have an old Bernina and the model number. They will be happy to help you find the correct foot that you need. The new presser feet do not fit on the old models, but they still have presser feet for your machine. Replacement presser feet may have a different number. If you're lucky enough to have an old Bernina and a new Bernina, it's easy to get the feet mixed up. Look at the top of these presser feet. The feet on the left are the older style Bernina that fit your machine. Notice the two square shaped bumps at the top of the foot. They kind of form a fork. The foot on the right is for newer Bernina models after the late 1980s. On the top of the foot is one continuous rectangle shape. It doesn't have that fork shape. This is how you tell the difference if, your feet, if you have feet from different models and you get mixed up. There are a few things that the all-purpose or zigzag foot have. First, the yellow arrow is pointing to an indented line in the front of the foot. It is directly in front of the needle, in the center of the foot. We will use this as a guideline when we sew on the next lesson. The red arrow is pointing to an oval hole in the foot. This is where the needle goes into the fabric. The green line points to a slit in the metal of the foot. This is where we put the thread under the presser foot before we start to sew. Even the bottom of the foot can tell you a lot. The foot on the left has an oval hole found on the zigzag or the all-purpose foot. The oval hole has room for the needle to swing left and right to do a zigzag stitch or a decorative stitch. The foot on the right has a very narrow hole. This is not the all-purpose foot, it is the straight stitch foot. These are not zigzag or all-purpose feet. Some of these may have come with your machine. Others are optional presser feet that you can buy. Notice that each has a number on it, on the shaft or engraved at the top. We will talk about these more in another lesson. Here are some close-up photos. At the top of the presser foot, there is a cone-shaped hole. On the sewing machine, there is a little ice cream cone shape that is pointing down. This is where the presser foot gets attached to the machine. Remember the presser foot clamping lever from our last lesson? The green arrow is pointing to it. It is used to hold the presser foot in place. It's a good idea to have a small plate or bowl next to you when you're sewing. You place small parts in the plate so they don't fall on the, on the floor. This plate has the presser foot that I took off the machine. I also use it to put pieces of thread and fabric in, sort of like a little small trash plate. We take the presser foot off when we change the, change the feet, when we clean and oil the machine, and we change the needle. Put the presser foot up, and the needle needs to be up also. And then we're going to tilt this foot to the side, and we're going to find the little ice cream cone that's sticking down and take it like that make sure it's on there and then we're going to take the clamping lever and push it down and then to take it take the um, foot off again the presser foot has to be up we undo the little clamping lever tilt it to the side and it comes off it can get confusing when I say foot when I say foot in the videos I'm referring to the presser foot when I talk about the foot control or the foot pedal, I will call it by its full name, foot control or foot pedal. 
Now that you understand presser feet, you are almost ready for the next lesson where we actually get to sew. First, we need to talk about something you use to sew, and that's your hands. Each of your hands has a job when you are sewing. It doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, each hand has its own job. Your left hand is the steering hand. When you steer a car, you steer gently and just a little bit at a time. We don't jerk the wheel to make, the, make corrections. It's a small, gentle change in our steering. As you sew, you will do the same thing. You will steer or guide the fabric so you can sew on a line or sew with the edge of the fabric along a line. It is important to be accurate. When you steer, you use your left hand and will steer gently and move or steer the, the fabric a little bit to make corrections. Your right hand is a straightening hand. One thing the right hand does is pull out pins. The right hand or straightening hand prevents the fabric from folding and puckering on the bottom of a seam. It makes sure the edges of the fabric are matching up. It rearranges the fabric and prevents it from falling off the table. It also arranges the fabric, or the paper in this case, so it doesn't bump into the right side of the throat of the machine. It helps so the fabric doesn't get caught where it shouldn't. Understanding what your straightening hand, the right hand, does may seem confusing for now. You don't need to remember all of this. You'll gradually learn what your hands do as you learn to sew on the machine. I will remind you as we learn and your mentor will also remind you. Just remember, left hand steers or guides and right hand straightens and removes pins. We will talk about and practice this in coming videos. You have heard me describe a lot of things today, but your homework is not very hard. For your homework, you need to show your teacher, your parent or mentor that you understand and can do the following things. You can pause the video or you can take a photo of the homework. One, find the all-purpose foot. Two, take the foot off the machine. Three, put the foot back on the machine. Four, tell your mentor what your left hand does while you're sewing at the sewing machine. Five, tell your mentor what your right hand does while you're sewing at the sewing machine. I'm excited because in our next lesson, we will get to practice all you have learned so far. You're going to sew on paper with no thread. We will also talk about sewing fast and slow, and you'll get to practice using your steering hand and your straightening hand. See you next time. And here's a note for the mentor. For the next lesson, you will need to set up the sewing machine on the table with the chair that you and your student found to be the best place. Have the sewing machine unthreaded. No thread in the bobbin, no thread on the top. Print out the three practice sheets or look at them and draw your own. They are listed under the link for video four.